Climate change is, without a doubt, one of the defining challenges of the 21st century. While global climate change itself is nothing new, the rapid warming trend we are currently experiencing is a direct result of human activities. By burning fossil fuels, clearing forests, and using synthetic fertilizers, humans have raised atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to levels not seen at any time since the emergence of our species. According to NASA, global average surface temperatures warmed roughly 0.87 degrees Celsius from 1880 to 2015. With melting ice caps and glaciers, sea levels have risen an average of 8 inches since 1880 and are expected to rise another 1 to 4 feet by 2100, even if mitigation measures are taken. Worldwide, approximately 100 million people live within 3 feet of sea level, meaning that tens of millions of people will be displaced in the coming decades, including some here in the United States. In fact, in January 2016, the federal government released $1 billion in grants to help communities in 13 states adapt to climate change, including one community in Louisiana that had to be relocated. Headlines deemed them the, quote, first American climate refugees, unquote. In Bangladesh, the capital city receives 2,000 migrants from rural areas on a daily basis, many of them displaced by climate-related effects on their livelihoods. Some small island states, such as the Marshall Islands and the Maldives, may be completely submerged. And of course, the consequences of climate change do not stop with coastal flooding and erosion. Some of the carbon we emit is absorbed by the oceans, resulting in acidification that threatens the viability of many marine life forms, to say nothing of the dramatic effects that warming waters have on marine ecosystems. Weather patterns are also changing, with increasingly severe and unseasonal heat waves, cyclones, droughts, blizzards, and floods predicted in many parts of the world. Needless to say, these patterns exacerbate displacement and poverty, particularly in the developing world. I'll leave it to you to educate yourselves in greater depth on the human and ecological costs of climate change. Our main focus in this unit is on the question of equity as it relates to climate change, and in particular, as it relates to what some climate activists call climate justice. The transnational climate justice movement, which has been led chiefly by activists from the global south and by indigenous peoples, begins from a relatively straightforward claim. Those who today suffer the most from climate change are descended from those who have benefited the least from greenhouse gas emissions. There is, they argue, an inverse relationship between responsibility and vulnerability, and for this reason, they seek accountability from those who are most responsible and least vulnerable. By making uneven levels of responsibility and vulnerability explicit, climate justice activists also lay bare differences of power. Those who are most affected by climate change tend to be not just those who are least responsible for it, but also those with the least power to enforce accountability or influence policy at the national or international level. Their visions of accountability vary, but many climate justice activists have criticized UN climate negotiations, including the 2015 Paris Agreement, for favoring wealthy governments over the very marginalized constituencies whose lives and livelihoods are most affected by a changing climate. For example, activists have demanded more robust and immediate support for climate adaptation, and some have even called for what they call climate reparations. Another point of controversy you'll encounter in this unit concerns whether people displaced by rising sea levels and other climate-related disasters should be classified as refugees under international law. Some see this as a way to protect their rights. But many who face displacement resist the refugee label because they see how refugees are currently treated and demand a better alternative, such as mitigation and adaptation measures that prevent their displacement in the first place. As you examine the materials for this unit, I encourage you to reflect on how differences of wealth and power figure into climate change both as a geophysical phenomenon and a political issue. What, if anything, do you think should be done to address the concerns of the climate justice movement? What are the economic and political roadblocks to more equitable climate policy? I also encourage you to maintain a critical awareness of how climate change comes to us in environmental narratives that are often oversimplified. For example, can we say that a complex, multifaceted conflict like the Syrian civil war is caused by climate change? The fact that drought exacerbated the conflict has led some to make this claim, 
But what do such narratives leave out, and with what consequences? And finally, a quick note on climate denial. I presume that you're all familiar with the so-called climate deniers or climate skeptics who have been misled by corporate PR efforts that manufacture doubt about the anthropogenic nature of climate change. If you're not familiar with these efforts, let me know and I'll be glad to direct you to reputable sources exposing how these campaigns have worked. But what you may not be conscious of is the denial that almost all of us exhibit in our daily lives. That is, when we're faced with the prospect of a global ecological crisis that's a direct result of how we feed, transport, and entertain ourselves, why do most of us take little meaningful action to change how we live? This is what social psychologists refer to as implicatory denial, the act of behaving as if something weren't known even when it is. Implicatory denial, to me, is one of the greatest challenges facing efforts to address climate change, and I'd be interested in hearing from you on how you think this challenge can be overcome.